All right, cool. So um, I should be recording up here from this webcam. Um, this I'm using my Brio. I've got it like attached to one of my studio lights. This probably is not the best way to go about uh, recording this, but I got a comment over on YouTube. You probably saw it on the screen just a little bit. It was on the last video I, I put up yesterday uh, talking about or asking you know, is FreeBSD better to use than OpenBSD? Let me go in here. And I did actually, um, D-Dubs uh, told me this. I don't know if he, like, found it out from somebody on my Discord or, you know, anybody who had watched the video. But uh, if you want to resize your uh, font in ST, you can use Control shift page up and page down to increase and decrease the size in ST. Um, why that key combination? I have no idea. I think it's kind of stupid, but it is what it is. So I obviously really enjoy running OpenBSD, and I have actually used FreeBSD in the past. Um, I've tried it a, f a handful of times, and to be honest with you, most of the times my biggest issue was that it just wouldn't like install for me. OpenBSD, I've never really had that problem with. I will say though, FreeBSD for most people is definitely the route that you should go with. Um, for example, if I vim or I've got an alias here for v, but if I go into my etsy sysctl.conf, this is a file for controlling the kernel uh, and kernel options. Uh, you can you can change them as you're as you're booting, and up here I have, or excuse me, up here you can see I have options for enabling audio and video capture. That's how I'm able to record this video with my microphone and everything. Uh, OpenBSD is very much focused on security, so things like microphone recording video recording, and I'm, I'm just showing you this because this is like the most extreme example of this. Things are done in a way that maximize security over um, performance or uh, compatibility. Uh, security comes first in everything. So I don't even know what I am doing here. Uh, quit out of there. For example, if I run HTOP, you can see I, I am running this on my ThinkPad T440P here, and uh, we only have four cores. Now, this is a four-core processor, it is, it, like it is a quad-core, but it does actually have hyper-threading, so it's technically four cores, eight threads. There are no extra eight threads here. That's because it's disabled by default. Um, I can enable hyper-threading in the kernel and also on the system, uh, like in the BIOS, but I have them disabled in both because the OpenBSD scheduler, just as, as far as I know from reading everywhere online, if you enable hyper-threading, not only are you opening yourself up to, you know, malware, like not, not necessarily malware, but, um, you know, potential exploits that use your hyper-threading, which do exist. Uh, most people don't know that, but they do exist. But, um, also, the scheduler is not, like, you're just not going to get that big of a performance difference with it on. Uh, and according to some people in some workloads, you actually get worse performance with it on. And I don't really feel like I have some arbitrary need to turn on hyper-threading. It's not going to make that big of a difference anyway. Uh, so, it, it's fine. Now, again, FreeBSD doesn't really suffer from this, and... For for most people, FreeBSD is probably going to be an easier time to get started with, and especially if you have NVIDIA cards, uh, you're gonna you're gonna need need to do that. Because if I open up the NVIDIA dri NVIDIA driver here on OpenBSD, there is one for OpenBSD. But if we go down here, this is the supported hardware, and so uh, the the only GTX card you're going to see on here is a GT200. So most likely you do not have a card that's supported uh, by this driver. And e 
even if you do have an NVIDIA card that's going to be supported and like it works just fine in OpenBSD, it's 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 not going to be the best experience, period, no matter what. NVIDIA and OpenBSD just don't really mix. If you've got an Intel or AMD card, you're probably going to have no problems whatsoever. So, yeah. Um, I, I guess this video exists really not to cover any of them. I'm not, I'm going to assume you're going to go out and do your own research on, you know, the specifics of OpenBSD and, you know, details about like their FAQ documentation. And you're probably going to look at the documentation of FreeBSD and like do your own research onto like what strengths and weaknesses they really have, like in the nitty and gritty. But for the most part, like, you know, if you need things like Docker or, uh, a lot of different compatibility for different software like you should you should definitely go with free bsd if you don't necessarily need those things and you want a simple os that you could actually understand and like potentially like make your own and modify and reasonably understand the entire os then open bsd is probably going to be something that's better for that and you know, especially for the type of person that's like, ah, I'm interested in maybe making a lot of my own tools for things that I do currently. It's great. And I will say it's not, oh, sorry, dropped my vape. But it's not like software support is like horrible on OpenBSD. I mean, you can still get your NeoVim set up all nice. Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, I mean, you've got Cube Browser, Chromium, Firefox. Um, and then you can use like Discord in the, in the browser, uh, you can obviously screen record. Now, you're not going to have OBS. I, I, I believe there's still someone working on that, but just record with FFmpeg. I'll, I'll be publishing the script. So uh, there's other people who use OpenBSD who have recorded content and have their own FFmpeg scripts. So, yeah. Um, to be honest, it's just, it's not for everyone. I really like OpenBSD. Like, really really like it but it's probably not for you most likely now it might be something interesting and fun to play with um highly recommend it for that i mean i i think it's interesting no matter what uh, just to see how light and how uh straightforward it actually works so i mean you can definitely play with it but i'm also going to be realistic in the sense that it's probably not something you're going to want to daily drive like myself and yeah i think that's pretty much it for the video i uh, hope you enjoyed it thank you for watching and i guess i'll see you in the new next video see ya let's see if i can kill this thing yep